Hey yo, Islanders, welcome back to another episode of Islander Robotics. As always, my name is Will McKeon, and today I'm going to be showing all of you another web scraping tool called Beautiful Soup. So if you're not yet subscribed, please do consider becoming part of the Islander community so you can get more content like this. As always, sit back, relax, with your favorite snack, and let's get started. Come pick me up because I just want to see the light. I want to be weightless. Teach me to fly. I won't hey, honors, before we actually get into explaining today's code, I just want to say today's video in no shape or form is going to be a financial advice video. Sorry, I'm the worst with money. Just ask any of my banks. As well as today's video is not going to be a full tutorial on any of the methods we're talking about. Instead, it's going to be more like how all my other videos are like, which is a project log on the specific project that the series is about, which is in this video circumstance the stock analysis tool and with all that being said today's video was actually a lot of fun to plan out to think to create so it means so much to me if all of you could hit that like button I really do appreciate it and let's just get into today's video and really what we're going to the modules we're going to be working with in today's video is going to be the request module as well as the BS4 module well more specifically from the BS4 module we're going to be importing beautiful soup now what I decided to do for the alias of beautiful soup was BS you could have the alias be whatever you want it doesn't have to be BS it's not something that's predefined by the class honestly you can have it whatever you want just make sure you're consistent throughout the rest of the code on what alias you use next thing we're gonna be talking about is this this class is going to cause really one of two errors either a stock does not exist error or a network error and that's what these classes are the solutions to if we have a stock does not exist error we're going to be calling upon this class and really the thing you have to make sure of this class is not like how the other class we're using in today's video this is a special kind of class that's only used for exceptions which is why we're the input argument for this class is exceptions and Really, we're just going to pass on to the next part of today's of the code. Same thing with network error. It's a special kind of class that we had to pass in the exception. And if this error is called upon, we're going to pass on to the next section of the code. Now, the class is going to do all this fun stuff with request and beautiful soup is going to be this price class. More specifically, price is going to get a symbol. It's then going to go to Yahoo Finance to web scrape the price and the percentage for that specific stock. All right. So, but really, before we can actually get the price or the percentage, we have to define the initializer for this class, which is going to get input argument of symbol. This symbol is going to be really important because when we say try network equals request dot get, and we pass in the URL of Yahoo Finance. This symbol, the symbol has to go right here so that the um, it is the correct URL for, well, the way that Yahoo Finance is set up, the symbol for that we're, you're currently looking at is going to go right there. And this is going to bring up all the information that we need to get. But for if some for some reason we're not able to get this website and the network is, we're not able to get to the network, we're going to go to the accept and we're going to raise network error. All right. And then if we are able to connect to the internet and there is a 302 code well defined here if network dot status code equals 302 we're going to raise stock does not exist error alright if by some miracle we're able to actually get a symbol that does work I'm kidding when everything does work correctly and we do get out of this if statement as well as out of this try accept method we're just going to go to self dot soup and this is where we're gonna call upon beautiful soup we're gonna say equal BS and we're going to pass in network.content. The way that beautiful soup works is actually unlike Selenium. Selenium, you use the web browser to web scrape all your information. Beautiful soup uses the request, the request module to get the HTML file of that specific uh, URL. And then that's how you're able to get the information. Well, that's how the magic's able to happen is based off of that HTML file. So we're not actually working with Google Chrome or any of the other web browsers. It's all based off of your system. Now you do have to define a parser and in our circumstance, we're going to define HTML um, five lib. 
A lot of people talk about LXML. From what I can understand, there's some compatibility. Well, there's essentially LXML I'm hearing is not really stable with Python 3 as of how Python is no longer supporting Python 2. All right, so that's why I decided to use HTML5 lib. If you have any more information on that little problem that was going on, I was not able to get LXML working on my system, please go right on ahead and leave it down in the comment section down below. And then the other thing we're gonna be um, keeping track of is the symbol and we're gonna do that with self.symbol. Once all the information is accomplished and we have created the initial, well, we have initialized this class, we're gonna now talk about the very first function which is over here on line 22, the price method. Now, what the price method is all about is finding the current price of the stock that we passed in. And it's gonna do this by just saying price equals self.soup.find. More specifically, before we actually continue on with what this line does, I mean what we're calling upon on this line, let's talk about what this method does. What the find method does inside of the beautiful soup is it finds certain attributes that you specify in the input arguments. In my, in my circumstance, it's going to be span. Now, for your application of beautiful soup, spans could be ID, class, all sorts of different stuff. So look into the data sheet. The, the, the if I can speak right, look into the data sheet for um, beautiful soup before you actually copy and paste my code, as well as the code. All the stuff that we're talking about in today's video will be down in the description bar down below. Go right on ahead and click that link down below. But anyways, what we're gonna be passing in so we can find the information we need is going to be span and then data rect ID. And more specifically, I wanna look at the 50 of data rect ID. Now where I got the data rect ID is actually, well, more specifically what we're going to do is I'm gonna swipe over to here. I'm gonna come over to the price because I wanna inspect this this element. I want to inspect this part of the website. So you do this by just right clicking on that and you go over to inspect. Now inside the inspect, it's going to bring up the HTML file for that URL. And more specifically, where you clicked on is going to be highlighted in blue. And what we want to look at is what is very, what's specific about this? What's very specific about what we clicked on. We could have done class, tersu, oh, all that. So instead of doing that, what we're gonna just do is data, oh, data rect ID 50, and then what that data rect ID 50 is actually equal to the price, which for Nike is 154.35 as of recording this video, all right? So when we come out back over to here and we say dot text, what we're getting from the find method is that 154, whatever text is associated with the input argument that we created. Now we actually have to do some stuff because there's certain circumstances where it's just not some clean number like 154, all right? So when we go down to self.current, oh wait, no, self.current price, we're going to say equals float of price.split. So we're gonna split this up into several different pieces so that we can manipulate how we want. Because sometimes there's gonna be stuff that's added on that we don't really need to know and we only care about the index corresponding at index zero. So that's really what's going on on that specific spot. More importantly, there's if it's a bigger number like in the thousands, there could be a comma. So if there is a comma, we have to use the dot replace and we're going to replace that with just an empty um, string, essentially. So therefore, in that specific character, it's an empty string, meaning there's nothing there in P Python's term. So it's gonna take whatever was in, let's say if it was one, two, three, and two is empty, one and three are going to combine, and three is going to become two. So that's what's going on with the dot replace. Now that for some reason, there are open parentheses and closed parentheses when dealing with the prices inside of this. I've gotten some errors based off of that. So I also decided to do the dot replace of open brackets and closed brackets. Now, since I was surprised about the open and the close, I just decided to do the percentage, mostly just so I can copy and paste this from where I'm at here to another section of the code that we'll talk about in just a second. But let's just say for some in, for some odd reason, we were not able to get this attribute. We're going to actually call the accept attribute error as an error, and we're gonna rise the stock does not exist error. All right, so now that we have the price, we actually have to get the percentage, which is going to be taken care of with percent method over here on line 33. Now I'm gonna be honest with all of you Islanders, 
it's basically the same as price. There's really two key differences. One being the rect ID is 51, not 50. As well as when we get the dot text from this um, percentage, what we're actually going to be getting is two percentage, the current percentage and the total percentage. So we're gonna use the dot split method to split them up, where the current percentage is going to be the zero index of split, and then we're gonna be doing the same replaces as what was on for the price, and then for the total percentage, it's going to be in index one, all right? So really, it's a lot of the same stuff as price, except we're breaking up different aspects of the HTML file. Now, once we have all that done, we're gonna have the same except error, and then we're gonna continue on. Actually, I'm gonna go straight into the driver method. The driver method is just like how how I always have driver methods in on this channel. It's just gonna automate the class. Now, the very next thing we're actually gonna be talking about is an error that I made in last video's code. Over here on getting the data.py, and more specifically, we're looking at the download method. And really, before we get into the download method and what I did and what was causing it, I just wanna talk about the, uh, the module that I had import to solve this error, which was the path lib. More specifically, from the path lib, I in ported the path and really what was going on was we're getting all the way down to this part of the code and then before the code can actually like before the CSV file can be downloaded this uh, script is trying to import that data into the um, software but if it's still being downloaded technically we don't have the file so to get around this what I did was I just say while true if path of self data at key term self that chose a market at index one is a file then break out of it so basically we're, we're double checking we're telling the software to wait until we can actually notice that the file is on our system now I know there are a couple of other ways to do this and if you know of a way to do this go ahead and leave it down in the comment section down below but to me this was the most logical way more specifically just because I want to make sure the file was being imported in it wasn't really anything to do with the selenium module it was more to do with my computer trying to find the file before it actually existed so with all that being said we're actually going to now go into islander stocks and look at the price of stocks method over here on line 30 and let's just get into it very first thing you're going to notice if i can get that out of the way is we're going to have three new key terms inside of our dictionary of data more specifically we're going to have them equal to empty list and those key terms are going to be price symbols and percentage all right so that's what's what's going on on line 31 to 33. after that like how i've been doing in all the other parts of this code when i'm dealing with key terms inside of a dictionary i appended those strings to a list called self.key and i did it like this self.key dot append and then I appended the three brand new key terms of this dictionary afterwards is going to be this while loop. really what's going on in this while loop is I'm asking the user to enter the maximum amount they want to spend on a stock all right so that's what's going on here it's the same as what I've always done with these int and the inputs so I'm not really going to be going too far in depth just besides saying try and then I set the maximum equal to int of input and then what is the maximum price you would like to spend and then break out if that int doesn't cause an error if there is an error it's just going we're just going to say please make a choice afterwards we're going to call create a for loop coming from the csv file that we import and we're just going to say for i in self.data at key term self.key at index zero because remember self.key isn't isn't first mentioned in the uh, price of stock me method it's mentioned throughout various different stages of this software and then once we do that, we're going to say try because there's still a chance that there could be some sort of error. We're going to say try data equals price. So the method that we just created in today's video, and we're going to say the symbol equals I. All right. And then once that's defined and we initialize that brand new instance of this class, we're going to say data dot drive. And if data dot current underscore price is less than or equal to the maximum and the data dot current price is greater than zero, as well as the current data dot current underscore percentage is greater than zero meaning it is a positive increase of a percentage we're going to say self dot data at key term of self dot key at index one meaning price dot append the data dot current price 
and then self.data at key term of self.key at index at index two dot append i meaning the symbol and then self.data at key term of self.key at index three we're going to append the data at of current percentage and then so that there can be so that all of you can see the output of what this method is doing we're just going to say print f stream dollar sign data dot current price comma 100 times data dot current percentage and then we're going to do the percent size then it's going to show the symbol for that stock and then if for some reason this causes at any point of this causes an error we're going to say accept stock does not exist error and we're going to pass we're just going to pass right on by and then self dot data we're going to create two other key terms we're going to say self dot data at uh, key term price underscore and underscore symbol equals a list of zip dot self dot data at key term self dot key at index one comma self dot data at self dot data at key term self dot key at index two and what we're doing here is we're taking the price and the symbol and we're zipping it together into one list same thing with on line 55 we're going to be doing the same thing except it's going to be the percentage and the symbol now one thing I did forget to mention is we're, we'll add is appending those two those two spots onto our self dot key uh, list so what I'm gonna do real quick is just do enter uh, self dot key all right real quick while I have all of you up I just want to say for all those Mac M1 users that are trying to use the key I mean the kite AI text editor or text I don't even know what you call this stuff that's down here use Tabian it works really nice with that Mac M1 I'm being honest with you I love that stuff this is not sponsored anyway but go ahead and check those guys out honestly it works I know the kite doesn't exactly work with M1s because I use an M1 and I haven't been able to get kite to work and really we're just gonna say self dot key at index it's not gonna be three well self dot key at dot append and we're gonna get rid of that we're just gonna copy this command C command V self dot key append percentage that symbol all right and with all that being said it's gonna allow us to have an output that looks a lot like this right here so this was what's going on on the screen right now is everything that we were talking about in last video now since we have the stocks we're just gonna say NASDAQ N-A-S-D-A-Q enter and oh wait it's going to bring up a Google Chrome it's like I said it's one I have three displays up it's gonna come up on one of those so what is my maximum price I want to spend well, let's just go with 10. Once I hit enter, all of you are going to be seeing the magic happen. So enter, and you're gonna be seeing the price, uh, the price, the percentage, and the stock symbol. So AACG has a price of 305 and a percentage of 3%, well, a 3% increase. And it's gonna keep on going all the way through until it's finished the list. Now you're all probably noticing that it's very very slow, which is what's going to be, all, which is what next video is going to be all about. So I'm gonna leave you all here and really thank you all so much for watching. Honestly, today's video was so much fun, planning it out, learning beautiful soup. So please, if you enjoyed today's video, go right ahead and hit that like button. I really do appreciate it. As well as if you're not yet subscribed and you really want to find out how I'm going to optimize this software to get the best results within a reasonable amount of time, then go ahead and become part of the Islander community by hitting that subscription button as well as that bell icon. As always, go ahead and leave a comment down in the comment section down below if you have any questions. Or if you want to check out today's code, there is a link to it, a Google Code Labs down in um, description bar down below. And then until next time, I'll see y'all. Bye. Happy coding.